we are potentially on the cusp of a big step forward in the evolution of road bikes. And if it happens, it's going to be a result of the wonder material graphene. Now, at the moment, only one bike brand in the world is producing frames out of this material. And it's these guys, Dassey. It's a boutique British brand that currently make less than 100 frames per year. And this one, their Interceptor, is their one and only graphene bike. But what is it that makes graphene such a wonder material? And why is it potentially going to revolutionise bike technology? Well, hold on tight, because it's time for some science. This unlikely looking spot is the home of Perpetuous, a carbon technology specialist and perhaps the largest producer of graphene in the world, extracting over 400 tonnes of the stuff per year. And the actual extraction itself goes on just in here. But before we see it, we need to get some protective gear on. Probably not what you're expecting, huh? First question then, what actually is it? Well, graphene is what's called an allotrope of carbon. Carbon itself being an incredible substance that can vary in form from this lump of graphite to a diamond. Now, both have the same atoms, but completely different properties. This one being incredibly soft, and the diamond, of course, being one of the hardest natural substances known to man. And actually, Perhaps counterintuitively, the graphene comes from this almost worthless piece of graphite ore. And that's because the graphene is a two-dimensional, single atomic layer of carbon atoms that are arranged in a lattice pattern that only when layered up give you this graphite here. And to actually extract the graphene from this graphite, you need to do what's called chemically exfoliate it. And for that, you need a reactor like this one and plasma. The longer the graphite spends in there, and the more aggressive the chemicals used, then the higher the quality your graphene will be. This is what you get out. This is graphene. Now, it doesn't look like much, so why is it so incredible? Well, firstly, it kind of goes without saying, but it is incredibly thin. True graphene is just one atom thick, so that's like a millionth of the diameter of a human hair. But yet, despite that, it's also incredibly strong, 200 times stronger than steel, in fact. And then thirdly, it's also incredibly conductive, one of the most conductive materials out there. But yet, in this unprepossessing form of black powder, you can't really do much with it. Graphene is impossible to isolate in sheets that are large enough to really be of any use. We're talking like nanometers here, not like entire TV screens. So instead, this is used as an additive to make turbocharged composites. Let me explain. So this graphene here has been functionalized with silicon. So that means that in the reactor, it was extracted with a plasma that has siloxane in it. And that means that it is in fact super hydrophobic. So if we demonstrate using a beaker of water and we add a teaspoon of graphene into it, you'll see that it will not mix, not in any way. And so you can see that in certain applications, like maybe paint or tires or electronics, that super hydrophobicness is going to be incredibly useful. But then, to contrast it, we have this, which has been functionalized with oxygen. It's called oxygen doped graphene, which is kind of cool. And you'll see that if we add a teaspoon of this one, it mixes almost immediately. And this is the stuff that we're going to use in structural carbon fiber. This is for bike components. Change of scene now, and we've moved into one of 
impetuous is laps. I have in front of me two pieces of carbon fibre, one with graphene and one without. And the one with graphene has had our oxygen doped graphene actually mixed with the resin and then impregnated into the carbon fibre. And we're going to very quickly see the difference between the two. So if I hold them up to the light, you'll see that in the graphene impregnated carbon fibre, almost no light permeates through it. Whereas in the normal carbon fibre, all those areas of light are actually potential weak spots because there's no fibres there, only resin. Whereas this one, because the graphene is dispersed evenly throughout the resin, it's a much more uniform piece of material. And that is because the graphene itself is actually improving the strength of the resin because it chemically bonds to both the resin and also the carbon fibers. So those bonds are acting like little hooks and they increase the so-called interfacial shear strength. So to put it another way, hopefully more simply, on this one, our traditional carbon fiber, we have two components. We've got a resin and we've also got our carbon fiber. Whereas on this one, it's bonded together, so we have one uniform and much stronger piece of material. But then, it gets even cooler, because actually this resin here is significantly lighter. Because of the incredible surface area of the graphene, it actually reduces the density of the resin. So you use the same amount of resin, and it actually makes the carbon fibre stronger, but it can weigh up to 50% less. Now you see why I'm getting excited, right? Knowing what we now know about graphene then, and just what it can do, what is its future in cycling? Well, having spoken to the founder of DASI, Stuart Abbott, he has clearly got some pretty big plans. Firstly, reduction in weight. Now this frame is currently a feathery 700 grams, making it among the lightest out there. But he's confident he can get that weight down to just 350 grams. That would put it at like half a kilo lighter than just about every other super bike out there. And then that 350 gram frame could be an aero frame. Now, currently, carbon engineers have to resign themselves to the fact that they have to add mass to a frame when they want more complicated tube shapes, such as aerodynamic ones. But with graphene, there would be no such penalty. And then your featherweight frame would be robust as well. Because of the incredible impact resistance of graphene carbon fibre, like we've already seen, then your bike could potentially be more impact resistant than a carbon frame weighing four times as much. And if that's not enough, things then get really clever. Because graphene is a conductor, ABBA is currently planning a bike with built-in circuitry and sensors. So it'll be able to collect all manner of rider telemetry, like power and torque and so forth, and then be able to map out what your perfect custom bike would be. Not to mention, in fact, having built-in DI2 and EPS wires as well. Yeah, how cool is that? Now, if you think I'm getting excited, you would be right, because this is really exciting. To bring us back down to earth slightly though, how long are we gonna to have to wait for this technology to reach the mass market? Well, probably quite a while. If this is version one of graphene, we need to realize all the possibilities that it offers and then develop it for the mass market. But this could very well be a glimpse into the future. I, for one, just hope that that three kilogram bike becomes a reality before I'm too old to enjoy riding up hills. Now, make sure that you have subscribed to GCN. It's kind of like the future, but already now. To do it, just click on the globe. And if you're after a little bit more information about materials that we currently ride and know, why not click just up there and you get through to a video, which is seven things that you didn't know about carbon fiber. Or to see aluminium and carbon fiber put head to head, you can click just up there.